Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time for some more Battle Brothers. Now, when last I left it, we had arrived at Heldenland, road weary and looking for work. Ah, work. That quaint mercenary pastime, also known as finding excuses to kill people. And preferably getting paid to do it. Now, we could do with a new member of our company. We really could. What's our current objective? Our current objective is no objective. Well, we're going to try and take possibly two of these contracts. We'll take the one skull contract and we'll consider the two skull contracts. Let's see who we can hire. Ah. Hark on the caravan hand. Absolute for swords, Danny's axe and crossbows. Yeah, you know what? Pretty good. But. Ooh. Yeah. Let's do a job or two first. Hjalmar of Heldenland kicks his feet up on his desk, knocking an empty goblet over. The peasants are at it again, bugging me. They say the wooden watchtower outside of Heldenland has been destroyed! I don't ordinarily take the fools at their word, but a few of my councilmen seem to have confirmed the news. So I've got to do something about it. He swings a finger at you, smiling as he does so. That's where you come in. Go to the wooden watchtower, kill those unruly vagabonds, and report back to me. How's that sound? You know what? We need the money. That sounds just perfect. Now rest assured that what I'm offering you is a fine prize for your work. It's 180 crowns when the contract is done. You know what? Yes, we'll do it. We will absolutely do it. What kind of state are we in? Well, we got a few levels to deal with. Hmm. Tolly the monk. Um, yeah, he can build towards mace, but then he's going to need some attack stats. Uh, hammer. That's mace. Fatigue and initiative. Okay, well, we absolutely need to build his attack a bit. And you know what? That's quite good. Give him a bit of fatigue. So he can keep that shield up, and there we go. How are we doing for... oh goodness. So he's currently actually looking to be our best... You know what, let's give him Fortified Mind. He may be our best banner bearer. Oh, he's just hit level 2, right? <laughs> Already get student from our good mistress. You know, I'm thinking 9 lives if he's going to be our company standard bearer. I mean, he, does, he doesn't even have a star there, so probably not. Uh. Hmm. Well, he could be blessed by the gods and survive anyway, I suppose. Uh, Dagrun Vavala. Let's do something about that hair of hers. It looks a bit disconcerting. I mean, she can be disconcerting if she wants to be. Um. Hmm. So I want to go down the rune inscription route first because they take so long to get going. But it would also be nice to get some of their other abilities going as well. Um. I, sh I should mention that the mod has been updated about four times since I last played. Um. Hopefully, it won't break the save. And, yeah, I've been missing this game, so it's nice to get back to it. So, about mercenaries. Traditionally, mercenaries have always been regarded as being rather unreliable, owing no allegiance to any one master. And, in fact, historically, they would frequently demand pay rises. Even mid-battle, they'd be like, you know, like, we ain't going in there. You didn't say it was going to be that dangerous when you originally hired us to do a job. We want extra. And they'd... 
and of course you'd think they could be just told oh sod off but actually the fact that they were really needed in this situation to help the, the local lord win he would have he would have to say well look okay we'd better sort out a deal or something you know so the mercenaries were basically dishonorable because they'd taken a job they'd agreed on the pay and they were demanding more for it um let's give her recover this is where the phrase you know being very mercenary or behaving very mercenary comes from in fact and this is actually interesting in regards to their depiction in role-playing games in in AD&D first edition I'm not going to go back as far as like purple red box and purple box you know cuz that's not as applicable oh it's going to be one of these two isn't it they were depicted as being chaotic neutral because back in basic there was only lawful neutral and chaotic and then chaotic was seen as rather undesirable so mercenaries weren't often depicted as chaotic but anyway when we get to AD&D with the nine free by free grid alignment system mercenaries were depicted as chaotic neutral and this made sense and was entirely in keeping with their um, ethos right then when second edition came along all of the alignments were redefined and some numpty writing the second edition books got the obsessive idea that alignment was personality in first edition alignment was not personality it was attitude and there is a difference right um, because it's like your your outlook your worldview not your personality right so in second edition they had the idea that a chaotic character mu must act chaotically on be whimsical and inconsistent and so they decided that mercenaries must be lawful neutral because mercenaries took the job they got paid then they did the job and that made them lawful neutral and even more lawful and competent than normal organized soldiers who were part of a regular force and were loyal and had a lawful world view and this this strange glorification of mercenaries continued all the way through to third edition when suddenly somebody realized they should all be chaotic neutral again and they have been ever since as far as I'm aware so yeah I am gonna go with this one because the free is really good but seeing a two in a defense stat with no star at all you can see fours there so we'll take that too All right. Price on tools will eat into any profits we make significantly, but we do need them. All right. Oh wait. Whoa. Okay. 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 Oh, we bought these. I don't think we bought these. I think we found them. If we bought these for that much, we ain't selling them here anytime soon. Right, let's go to our duty then. And it is a hidden location, probably along this road here. Ah, yes, and it's of course... Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa! Easy, easy, easy. Ah, awesome. You two are fighting? Great, we'll join in. <laughs> they were determined to have a scrap with someone. Okay. Let's take it nice and steady and slow. He says, rushing all the way forwards and see if we can get an eye on our enemies. We can indeed. Oh, they've got archers, that's a problem. And the main reason why it's a problem is that we might get shot. Seriously, I was, I was forming up battle lines to go, to go this way and you're all rushing in front of us? This is a godsend. 
Well, he's dead. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's just blast him like that. And wait. Look, we're not expecting to get much out of this fight, okay? What we're hoping for... Ugh. Here we go. Is to get a bead on more enemies. Oh, here's it. He does not have healthy looking skin. Okay, you can just rush up to there. Safe in the knowledge that your companions will shortly be with you. And you'll probably get killed by these too soon anyway. Right then. Let's go this way. Wow. Yeah, I'm thinking he'll fall to the dog. And then she can get a bit nearer the battle line. Yep. Doggy done. Doggy done exactly what we said it would. Alright, alright. You go near him and yell at him that we are not his enemies. Alright. Get a little... here we go. We're aiming for him because we don't want to accidentally hit one of their dogs and get in trouble. And we miss completely. Okay. Get in there for those free strikes when they flee. In there. Problem I have with frequently have with this new beard the Legends mod has added is that it never quite matches the hair colour. I saw that one coming. As soon as he swapped places I knew what was going on. Say, okay, just get close to the action because it's nearly all done now, anyway. You shot your own dog, mate. That wasn't us, we're not paying for it. So, we've come out of that one with some experience, could be better, could be worse. Did we really buy that for over a thousand. I might have to go back and check the last video. <laughs> right, let's go have a proper fight then. We might... I don't think they'll get sucked in, but it'd be nice. You find a bandit just outside the wooden watchtower. He's carrying the body of a peasant, which is about good enough evidence. So, you prepare to slaughter him and all his friends. You order your men to attack. They asked for this, really, in all honesty. You know, killing innocent people. Well. We say innocent. Right, let's just hold for now. For their numbers are many. As are our arrows. Actually, no, our arrows are not infinite. Oh, this is about to get interesting. And this is why. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, okay then. Let's have some fun. Boo! That's more like it. Well, she's got a man voice now as well. I suppose mod updating is messed with things a bit. But hey, let's have some fun anyway. Ah, oh, that was a shame. 
I don't know where he thinks he's going. Actually, I've got a pretty good idea. He's coming around the back here, isn't he? Right. Now, normally against more trained foes, I'd make better use of our shields. But for now... Yeah, don't think you're going to miss out on the fight, my good friend. For now, though, this rabble could do with a solid thrashing, which we thoroughly intend to deliver to them. Okay, get him there and cut him up. Or fail to do so, apparently. And you, my dear, can get in there and mash his face up. We're going to have to work on that mashing. You're not very good at it yet. This is a priority, as I've just proved. Or, well, as he has just proved. I should have gone round. Oh, well. Let's just hop back to there and save our ammo. You can thwack him in the head with a stick. Whack him in the head again. That stick always looks a bit like a shower reel curtain. I know what they're doing with the top there and what they're trying to copy. But it's not quite the intended result. You know, let's just finish him off. He's right there after all. Yeah, you can wait. There we go, lovely. Even got a couple of levels out of it. The battle is over and the wooden watchtower has been secured. It's time to return to Hjalmar of Heldenland. Alright. And that other company didn't step in on our fight despite being practically adjacent, which means... Yeah, they even look like mercenaries. They don't look like... Regulars. Hjalmar of Heldenland glances at you as you enter. Sir, is it all clear? You nod. Hjalmar of Heldenland gets up and gives you instructions. You're to take a troop of builders back to the wooden watchtower. What, now in the middle of the night so they can rebuild it? Well, absolutely, let's do that. Because by the time we get back, it may very well be morning. Company of the what? It's always nice to see um, competing mercenary companies out for... W well, no. Knowing that they're there taking the jobs, they're clearly not taking the jobs that are available to us, although they are taking jobs. So it's not nice knowing that they're taking the work, but it's nice knowing we're not the only ones doing it and that there are other people going on in the background. Most of the builders head into the wooden watchtower and begin preparations for rebuilding. The foreman thanks you for getting them there as safely as he knows the dangers of the world. He also thanks you for not betraying them all into an early grave. You take this gratitude with a smirk before starting the journey back to Galmar of Hildenband. It's time to get paid and we hope those four brigands don't cause any trouble because we were paid to deliver these people who weren't paid to stay and watch them. Even though we should have been, probably. Kalmar of Heldenland is in his study when you return. He shows a scroll to you and asks if you know what it is. You shrug. I'm not a learned man. Not of a written word, anyway. Kalmar of Heldenland returns with a shrug. What a shame. But you are a man of the spoken word. You've owned up to your promises, and believe me, this is rare to see. Your pay is in the corner. The pay is right where he says it is. You spend little time dawdling on ceremony, and take it and make your leave. Easy money. Oh, so one of the contracts has been taken by the mercenaries. Well, okay then. My god, we are not getting good value for that. Right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some overpriced tools. 
and we're going to hire this caravan hand before the other mercenary company does. And he looks quite promising. Well, one, one, and two. Not, not that promising, okay. Um, we'll give him a spear for now. And it's probably high time we began investing in some good headgear. He says, looking at what's on offer. Okay, look, we're just going to take that and that. And possibly that as well if we need it. Right, you. Don a shabby old cap. Uh, hood. And you, likewise. You know what, we're going to swap those. It looks slightly more monastic. No, it doesn't. I'll take that back. Yeah, we'll go back to that. Right, we will set all these to repair in the interest of making a little more money out of them. Eh, might even set that to... Recycle. Yeah, okay. Leveling. Fun. Okay. So I was going to snag this. But as he's a religious fellow, we'll go fortified mine first instead. Okay, these are all good numbers this time. Hmm. Needs that. Needs this. Needs this. And we'll go with that as well. There we go. Now we're also going to give a nice little treat to our enchantress here. There we go. Um, I would have given her one of the um, stubble hairstyles, but they're only available to men, so her hair could be regrowing. You know what? Stuff it. She can have ridiculous dreadlocks. There we go. And we will take this task because we really need the money. A servant bids you to wait for Rymar the counsellor, who, he says, will be right with you. And so you wait. And wait. And wait some more. And finally, as you're about to leave for the second time, Rymar the Counselor throws open the door and rushes towards you. Ah, who's this again? The mercenary? His assistant nods and Rymar the Counselor sets on a smile. Oh, most fortuitous to have you in Heldenland, good captain. It's imperative that some precious commodities of mine reach assisted. Assisted? It's not Scots at all. Assisted. As safely and quickly as possible. You are precisely who I need, for no common brigand would dare attack you and your men. Yes, I, I'd like to hire you for escort. Make sure the items are delivered to Espen of Assested. No details, of course. Can we come to an understanding? Okay, look. This guy, he's in a rush. He doesn't look too closely at the details. Which means... If we start wasting time haggling... He ain't gonna appreciate that. Plus, we don't do that. We don't do that. What's the pay? He nods. Ah, yes, good. I was thinking about payment for your task earlier. You'll be paid 30 crowns in advance, another 100 when the job is done. Well, it's at least payment when the job is done. Let's do it. Off we go to Assastad. And we might even have... Where the... Flippin' heck. Okay, that's a long way. That's a day. As is customary, you assemble the men to explain the company's next steps. Brothers, the enlightened ones must show the world we are forged of a hotter fire than other mercenary bands. As our reputation grows, so will the influx of crowns into our coffers. Let us forge a path to greatness. What do you tell the men the company will do? You know what, let's try and get all of the camping skills. We've probably got most of them anyway. We have indeed got most of them, and oh yeah, let's... We don't want to go messing with a bandit archer, and they don't want to leave us alone, apparently. They are determined. 
overpriced donkey to hunt us down. Don't trust the militia here. One time as a band of outlaws approached, they turned tails and ran for the hills without giving any fight. You know what, that's just the information we needed right now. We do need food though. Oh my god! You know what? Let's grab the grains and go! To Assastad! Must explore that road for some time. Uh, I have a horrible suspicion that was a bunch of peasants or monks being assaulted by the brigands behind us. We should have... Oh, come on! Seven thugs on seven of us. We stand a chance. Let's do it. If only to assuage our cons conscience for having allowed others to fall into the hands of ruffians. It was mainly the archer that did it. All right, you. Let's... There we go. Lovely. Hold. Now we're talking. Rain is never good for bowstrings. You need a bowstring to be nice and taut. And if it gets wet, it gets damp and soggy and just doesn't... Oh, you bastard. I needed to be there. Right, you. Have it. We'll do something about that. I promise. Here we go. Nice. Now let's do some bapping. We want to hamper his damage output significantly and even whack him on that bounce. Right on his pate. So we're just closing distance for now, making it a bit harder for them to lap round as they are constantly intent on doing. Let's see if we can get a stun off. We cannot. Because all the special skills always miss because the penalty to hit with them is too high. I mean even if you stack attack skills you're still just screwed. Nice, 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 nice. So, the mod now includes a couple of interesting new features. There's a so-called gender equality option, which makes the women spawn much more frequent than the men, and allows them to just be part of the straight-up male backgrounds. It does also allow for female company commanders. Now, previously, some company origins had been opened up to occasionally being women. That's like the hunter could be a huntress, the... The Templar Crusader could be like a female crusader and a few others. Um, that doesn't seem to be possible without the gender equality option anymore, which is a shame because I'd like the idea of having a woman in command of the company without necessarily having to have quite so many women be available for hire to fill all other roles. Another thing the mod has done, if I can remember what it is, oh, it's something to do with, oh no I can't, I'll, I'll have to look it up later, but it, it's in relation to something I've witnessed in this fight now that I'm trying to remember, unfortunately, oh and she's just left herself wide open there. So we're just going to have to lower defences and try and beat him down. Just working away at his stamina there, or outright killing him. A nice little haul there, especially the money. 
Now, this full leather cap will be really useful for someone tough that we'd like to protect. There we go. You know what? Our frontliners all have equivalent or better already. There we go. And we could do with some of these shields as well. Lovely. How far till our next... Not too far. Okay. So it wasn't to do with camping. Or the women. What was the other big change? I can't for the life of me remember. That's infuriating, that is. Because it was, it was on my mind. Hmm. Ah, uh, it's gone now, whatever it was. That's unfortunate. I'll hopefully remember by the next episode. Um, hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, it wasn't the women, it wasn't that. But it, I think it was something to do with the way people appear to be hired in towns. Hmm. I cannot remember. Annoyingly, I could sense that it was coming to the forefront of my mind there, and then it just gave up and it was like, no, we're not going to remind you. You'll have to suffer without the knowledge. All right, assassin. There's one of assassins waiting for your gent of a room. He hardly takes a cargo off your hands. Oh, oh, I did not think you'd get here. His grubby fingers dance along the chest, carrying the cargo. He turns around and barks an order to one of his men. They step forward and hand you a satchel of crowns. That was a sustard, that was. And there's work here for us as well. If only we had space to hire someone new. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a nice, a nice blokey doke we could have hired then again. Ooh. Okay, oh yeah, they, um, they split out the two-handed swords from the regular one-handed swords in the weapon grouping. Uh, they changed the way the random perks are assigned again. So they're either a bit more random or a bit less. I can't remember. Oh, no. I still can't remember that other thing. Right. So he's got Colossus. So, so he's going for swords. So let's just do that right now before I completely forget. Given his lack of defense stars and lack of shield specialization, any good numbers we can put in defense stats are good for him, and oh god, he needs resolve. He needs resolve so very badly. Is that affecting resolve? No. But we'll be wanting to treat it soon. What can we get for... I mean, we're never going to... I don't know, actually. Alright, we, we got a bit of money back, and we do need another job. I'll do this one more before I end the episode. A man strummed a string's instrument as you walk by. He slashes an ear-piercing chord, and you turn to find him laughing. <laughs> I thought that might fence your attention. Espen of Assessed said we should be keep a lookout for a person of your vocation. If you're looking for work, he's got the man to go to. He's the man to go to. Yep, yep, he's for one, absolutely. You ask if this figurehead pays well. The man nods, clearly reeking of wine from the night before. Yep, he told me this here loot. He gave me this here loot as payment once. Now I'm just waiting for the old devils to come down and challenge me to a tune. <laughs> As but of a sister said, but if you best said if you best one in the game of songs, then they'll give you a golden loot. 
Now that's what I call good payment, wouldn't you agree? The man turns back to the instrument, drawing a mewling tune out of the strings. In the distance, dogs begin to howl. You know, we'll go listen to this Espen fellow. I'm sure what he has to offer will be more pleasant to our ears. You find Espen of a Sastard, closing a box up. He quickly glances up, as though he's been caught with his pants down. Uh, so sword, thank you for coming. He locks and latches with a few quick snaps, then he pats the crate a few times, even leans on it as though it needed one more fat latch. This here cargo has to be delivered safely to Havelberg. A man by the name of Gustav of Havelberg is waiting for it. I do not believe the task will be easy as the cargo is rather precious to certain people who'd go to great lengths to acquire it. This is a one skull contract? Which is why I'm turning to, uh, well, to you, in fact. I, are you interested in doing this for me? Look, normally when there's a rival company out to steal the thing and beat us down, that's a two skull contract. So maybe he's talking like the thieves who are likely to try and steal it on the road. Rest assured, what I'm offering you now is a fine price for your work. It's uh, ten crowns in advance, another hundred when the job is done. Well, it's... Hey, is what it is, I suppose. To the east? I don't think the road goes east. Oh, it does. You notice food stocks are running low. Perhaps it is time to camp and go hunting. Mercenaries march on... That shouldn't be a question mark. Mercenaries march on their stomachs, and apparently so do mercenary companies. Keep the company's bellies full by sending your highly skilled killing machines to hunt the land for food. Hunting parties can only be sent out while encamped. The more people assigned, the more food that can be hunted. The hunting tent can be upgraded by purchasing a crafting cart from a settlement merchant at an exorbitant cost. An upgraded tent has a 10% increase in hunting efficiency for the something like 8,000 gold it will cost. Additionally, there's a chance that some of the spoils of the hunt, other than food, can also be salvaged and brought back to camp. What, like falcons and dogs, maybe? Well, we have the final camping skill. That's great. That is not enough food. So let's... my god. Okay, we're selling that dagger. Look, that, that's probably the best deal we're going to get for a long time, so let's just flog this here. I don't remember buying these for such a hefty price. We might have found them. There we go. Okay, the road does go this way. Wonderful. Let's hope we don't have too many unpleasant incidents along the way. Having finally learned all the skills required to properly run your company while camped, you feel confident that you will be able to venture further into the wilderness and keep the company running smoothly. I did actually experience a camping bug once or twice, which was quite unusual. You come across a goatskin tent beside the road. The hide tarps have been dipped in purple dyes and there are fresh daisies twisted into knots of matted goat's hair. An old woman with a hunchback stands outside with her hands clasped and hanging. She seizes you up and down with withered eyes. Ah, a cell sword. No, no, a captain of cell swords. Or perhaps something more. You smell of a strange odor, and not just that of a man. Oh, you have many men in your company. Do you wish to have your fortune told? She gestures inside the tent. You see a number of long cards laid face down on the table. You know what, let's see, is... Because they seem to have just completely re Yeah, they've rewritten this one. It's a shame, because the older version was actually interesting, where she was a witch and tried to assassinate the company leader. I haven't... I've only seen that one once, and it is on record in one of the previous videos. But yeah, I mean, that was more interesting as it led towards something. Let's get into Havelberg and get our pay. 
Uh-oh. We've been robbed. You rise up from a nap and turn over, looking for the package as though it were a lover. But she's not there, and neither is the cargo. Quickly getting to your feet, you begin ordering the men to attention. Leaf Quickmind runs up and says he's tracked some footprints leading off from the site. Then we shall follow them. My god, the... One footprint. Oh my goodness, no! Ho <laughs> ho! You can't make out who is attacking. Yes, I can. I bloody saw them on the map. We are doomed. So this is the new, new version of the Alps again. They have been redesigned once more. We should get the hell. Oh my god, they're going to be in the snow. We are doomed. Can't we just run away? Ooh, we're having a nice sleep and when we get robbed and when we get attacked by bloody nightmare monsters. So we want to make it onto the road, okay? Just to get good solid firm footing. We also want to be applying pressure to our enemies. Yep right in the middle of the snow. Just where we don't want them. Well, hello there. Well, it costs us to move. Yeah, sure. Worth a try, I suppose. So, now, they do put people to sleep again. Which is... Not entirely unpleasant. I mean, it's less than ideal. Let's shoot him. So now they teleport when they get hit. Oh, hello you, trying to make things difficult. So they swap places to make it harder. They still put people to sleep and they torment them in their dreams. We need you to be woken up. Wake up! Right. And obviously they're all changed. But it seems to be a single target sleep now as opposed to the group sleep of old. Now. Okay, I see you all. Ah, it was worth a try, I suppose. Not much of one, admittedly. Okay. Yep, of course. Sleeping him again. And the pain of sleep. Slumber. Right, you just get over there. And he sleeps. Um. Let's get a bit of distance. No. Still the same odds. Alright. And sometimes you just can't see where... Oh! That's where the third one is. Right. Sure. Wake up. Your company needs you. And of course he's asleep now. Right. Get to there. So now it becomes... More like the original Alps, where it's about chasing them down before they can do too much damage. Nice. Are you still sleeping? You are. You need to be woken. Arise from your slumber, sir. And bash his noggin. Alright. So, one up here, badly wounded, one down here, less badly wounded. Awesome! Nice, we now have just for one foe. And it's in a not entirely bad position. Oh, he's legging it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We probably won't catch him, but let's make sure he does not come back.
yeah, let, let's just leave it at that. God dear. Ah, weapon rune sigil of accuracy. And we haven't even set our crafter to crafting shield runes yet either. An inscribed rock can be attached to a character's weapon. Right click here, yeah. plus 10 melee skill, full range skill. Well, that's good. That's worth saving for a really good weapon bone. And some nice thing, a petrified scream. And parched skin. Nice things that we can make gruesome grizzly trophies with. Now, come on. This footprint seems to be headed this way. Ah, good. There we go. The robbers went past our destination. How thoughtful of them. Could they perhaps have dropped off our delivery? No, not really. That's not what they intended. So they waited near the intended, intended or intent destination. I mean, intended would be... Oh, bugger. Really? Okay. Okay, we should come upon them. And it's a bloody archer. We don't have enough archers at the moment to balance that out. But let us see. Oh, this is going to be a long episode, isn't it? Right. Shields up and advance towards the bowman. This is not a shield. It's a delay. That's a delay. And then one rushes right to... Oh no, there's snow. Just shoot him. He's, he's just got he's got a hack, sorry, he doesn't even have a proper weapon. And shield up, and there's our front line. Right. I mean come on, he that was a mercy killing. We do want to start getting new combat type skills for our leader soon, but we also want to increase the company size. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, that's brutal. Right, you, all the way back there. You're out of range? Come closer if you want to shoot anybody. Okay, he has amazing eyesight. It's not the weapon range that's limiting us here. Shouldn't be the helmet either. Alright, we got this one under control now. It's just a matter of whether he makes it out alive or not. And he probably will. Archers always run away. Well, not always. Sometimes they can be persuaded to stick around for a few rounds first. Yeah, we're not going to catch him. Fortunately, they magically never run away with the thing we're trying to recover. The blood of thieves runs thick. You manage to find your employer's goods still in the camp. All locked and safe. He doesn't need to know about this little excursion. Well, fortunately, returning back to our path will take us to our destination along the way. So in that regard, it is a little nicer. And we got a couple of levels out of it, too. Oh, that's good. That's very good. That's tragic. Right, we also need some resolve. And I'll give you a bit more health, and then a lot more health. Big boy. Is this, this is getting recycled, I think. At camp, later on. Uh, the Vala, on the other hand, needs a lot of resolve. She does need good stamina. And a melee skill below 50 is just really bad. But she might get shot at a bit once in a while. Ah, so that we go for 51 for now, and then we can start looking at other. Right, we can give her lots of health, and give her malevolent spirits, which is a weird one. Uh, 
I'm just get a fortified mind because a lot of her abilities use resolve. And once at Havelberg, we will collect our pay. My apologies if this hasn't been the most riveting episode, full of lots of contracts and battle and conflict. This is another, like, 6am special. Well, it's more like 7 in the morning now. Gustav of Havelberg welcomes you and a few of his men hurry over to take the cargo. He claps you on the shoulder. I take it your journey went well? You spare him the details and inquire about your pay. Ah, sell sword through and through. Carl, get this person what they ask for, what they deserve. A fair payment. One of Gustav of Halberg's bodyguards walks over and hands you a small chest of crowns. Yeah, I'm avoiding man there because our company leader on this occasion is a woman. Um, I wouldn't mind having a company with both the Crusader and the... and the Seer in, but I don't want all of the other Legends heroes as well. Can we make anything nice here? We can cat potion. Quick as a cat. Okay, good. So it's not a witcher cat potion then, which lets you see in the dark. Uh, speaking of witches, the, um, you know what? Yeah, let's have a little fun. So, uh, I'm going to save this here. Because I can. Yeah, prescience. And then we're going to load. Is that the Slayers? I think that's the Slayers. But did I have a... Yeah, no, that's for Slayers. Right. So, here we have a nice little company that I didn't record, unfortunately, for the first 40 days. These are the Slayers. We have Erm over Roasted. We rescued her from being burned as a witch. The event cut out oddly and the last portion of the narrative text was completed. We weren't told she joined, she was just with the company afterwards. But hey, hey look, here we have um, this fellow, Guntram, who is uh, pretty nasty with a sword. I mean, that's with his hand injury, you know, he's normally like a 76 or something. With some nice perks. Um, lots of hand injuries because we had to fight... Um, uh, what's it, a giant recently. But yeah, so with the Monster Slayers company, I mean, you've just got to, really, with one of them, haven't you? you you've got to. And uh, you've got to have the Noble War endgame conflict. So I might be recording this origin next, after the, the Seer either becomes redundant due to constant mod updates or something else, but hey... So there we've had a little quick look into the Monster Hunters. Uh, but now I'm going to say bye-bye. I hope you've all enjoyed this episode and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. I'll say bye-bye for now and cheerio!